I made nine painful brewing mistakes for you to learn from. Starting with this hop grown behind me is a hop called Super Pride. This is the hop that I'm gonna use in my homebrew. It has roughly 16% alpha acid, so I'm expecting a really bitter beer. Which would be true if I hadn't misidentified the hop. The hop in my hand is Pride of Ringwood, a hop that is half as bitter. I'm gonna pull this big vine right down here. I grew them at home, but they didn't turn out too well. And I went away on holidays. They all died. I didn't water them. Now I'm just gonna have to sit here and pluck these flowers off one by one. Super Pride was first released in 1995, the year I was born, fun fact. Um, and it's primarily used as a bittering hop. So what I'm expecting with this beer is to get something that's very, very bitter. Look at the size of this big boy I just picked, the size of my head. Nah, it's not that big, about the size of my nose. Look, I'll be honest, <clears throat> I kinda regret that. Oh, I can't get it out of my mouth. That's so bad. It's really grassy. I guess that means my beer's gonna end up really grassy though. My mouth is still like, since I ate that flour, my mouth is numb. So I got roughly about 200 grams of hops. I got 1.2 kilos of Pilsner malt and Gladiator malt. I spent about an hour in the brew shop talking to the guy. Um, he recommended I didn't do a smash. I was thinking I'd do a smash, and he said, don't do it. He gave me the perfect analogy. All right, are you ready? He said, take a five-star Michelin chef, and you give him a, a, a piece of lamb, and you say, cook it for me. They're gonna have to cook that perfectly every time. But if you say, add in spices and all these other things, you have stuff to fall back on, so you don't have to get it exactly perfect every time. So that's why I've gone with 1.1, 1.15 kilos of Pilsner and 50 grams of Gladiator. I wasn't sure if the brood bag I had would be big enough, so I got a large one. Look at the size of this thing! It's like your nanny's underwear. Oh, this is gonna make a mess. Of course it is. What's 67 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? 67 degrees Celsius is equivalent to 152.6 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna get a real temperature gauge with a, a normal a normal measurement on it. We'll get this one up to 150, we'll get our malt in and we'll start making that work. That's gonna sit in there for about 60 minutes. Well, I have now learnt that if you just put the bag in the water and pour the malt into the brew in the bag in the water, things are a lot easier. Look at all that malted barley. Oh, I breathed in all the, all the dust. Can't be good for you. The smell coming off this barley is so nice. The man at the store milled this down for me. And as you can see, look at that. Beautifully, beautifully milled down. And while we're in the store, we ate some, and he pretty much said it should taste like biscuit. And that's exactly what this malt tastes like. It is, oh, it's like breakfast. It's like breakfast, it's really, really nice. I just picked up the bag. Is this stuff important? Please let me know. <laughs> this is good. I'm excited. I am really, really pumped. Okay. We're now at the 150 mark. I'm just gonna submerge all this barley in. Leave that hanging there. Hope that's not a fire hazard. And now we just have to heavily, heavily monitor this and make sure it stays at 150. My mistake here was that I was riding the temperature and trying to keep it at exactly 65 degrees Celsius. I could have just put it in there and let it steep like a giant tea bag. So it's been in here quite a while. I've actually taken one of the trays out of the oven. I wasn't gonna sparge, but I will. So how I intend to sparge this beer is I will lift up the brew in the bag, I'll place my tray down. And then I've got, my, I've got my kettle. I boiled it about an hour ago, so it should have cooled down by now, I hope. I'm gonna make a mess here. I don't know if this one's a mistake or not, but in hindsight, I'm pretty sure this is not how you sparge. <laughs> I read somewhere not to squeeze your bag so you don't get tannins, but I also read somewhere that that's a, ah, it's hot. Yeah, probably avoid burning yourself. Also read somewhere that that's a myth, so I'm gonna squeeze it. <gasps> I'm gonna risk it.
Chef hands. Oh, man. We've done well. We've done well. We've got what? We've got what, ladies and gentlemen? We've got what? What am I going to do with this? Chewy. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to get this to a boil. Now, while it boils, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start measuring out all of those hop flowers. Look at them. Oh, they smell like dope, but they smell good. Let's have a uh, taste test. Mmm, 20 grams. Oh, that was nearly spot on, 15 grams. Beautiful, 20 grams of hops. Look at them, straight in. Okay, so that's 20 grams of hop flowers in. I've got 200 grams. At the 30 minute mark, I'm gonna add in another 80 grams of hops. Last five minutes, I'll add in 50 grams. And then at the very last minute for dry hopping, I'm gonna add in the rest. That's the last amount of hops going into this, all for that aroma. Somehow Australia is sold out of ice at the moment. I went to three supermarkets, couldn't find any, but I had some leftover in the freezer. My ice bath is gonna be a water bath. So what I'm gonna do instead is use my leftover ice and actually put it in my vessel. As you can see, down at the bottom, packed with ice, packed with hops for dry hopping. I'm hoping for something that tastes really, really awesome. What you're about to witness is probably my worst mistake. Half of my word has just ended up in the sink. Kill me. Don't worry, I'm still not done making mistakes, but God, doesn't that look so appetizing with that fresh green hop in there. This actually smells really, really nice. So I'm kind of excited. Actually, I'm very excited. I'm not kind of excited. I'm very excited to see how this turns out. All I need to do now is add in my yeast. This is a Nottingham yeast. I've never used it before. I mean, I haven't used many yeast, but I'll see. In goes my seven grams of yeast. And after a few days, look how it's going. I have learned that I hate using a glass carboy. Mainly, the glass isn't the issue. The issue is that it's just a nightmare to get the beer out because I've got to use centrifugal force and get the liquid to come out with liquid already in the tube to get into the bottles, which means it's probably going to be a bit of waste. And if I mess it up, it's just like, it's more risk of contamination. Never use, never use a glass carboy unless it's got a tap on the bottom. Let's say there's 5% alcohol in here. Wouldn't that at this stage start killing germs? I just, I'm not comprehending it. Can someone explain it to me in the comments? This is filled with water, so that'll go straight to my glass as I'm gonna show you. Quick freeze frame, but can you tell what mistake number nine's about to be? Here, I'll give you a hint. Oh, we gotta give it a taste test. Hmm, why is no liquid coming out? Ugh, so annoying. I'm, I'm so dumb. I've put a cork in it, so no air is gonna go in, so it won't suck the beer out. Oh, who raised me? Let's freaking go. We've done it. We've got to go on, we've got to go on. It is quite cloudy, so at this moment I'm gonna call it a, a super hazy pale ale, but I think my, all my yeast sediments caked up on the end of the the the, the 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 sediment thing. But let's see how it goes. Probably gonna get a mouthful of a uh, yeast here. It's actually is as grassy as what I expect it to be. And I should stop eating these things, but I really want to know what a, a dry hopped hop flower tastes like. I wonder if it would have like that, that beer kind of flavor to it. That's what's left. There's absolutely no way, like, there's no way it's going to taste any good. It like, it smell, it smells like, like really bready. Ah, it kind of just tastes like eating a leaf. A bitter leaf. <laughs> Uh, I thought it was going to like kill me or something. Definitely not as cloudy as that first mouthful I had. Smells a bit nicer.
It's very fruity. I thought it would be super bitter. It's not super bitter. Very long hop lingering flavor, which I guess is good, but we'll see how it goes once it's- <laughs> <laughs> I think it's ready. Beautiful color. It's got a beautiful color and it's not as cloudy. Four weeks I have been waiting for this beer. I cannot tell you how excited I am to try my fresh hopped beer. It smells like passion fruit. Are you ready? This is the taste. This is what I'm hanging for. Oh my God, is this good. It's good, it's good. It's more bitter than when I initially tried it without carbonation. The fruitiness is still the same. It has a really, really good mouth finish, so it lingers for a while. I am super proud of this beer. A lot of pride of Ringwood went into this beer, but I've made mistakes, I made mistakes. One mistake I've even made before is not knowing the difference between a stout and a porter. I actually thought they were the same, and I talk about it right here. 